Well, hello, everybody. It is a, another beautiful day here on Delmarva. It has been about two weeks since I pressure washed the planner. Uh, the intention was to pick up the camera the next day and carry on. However, that did not happen because, well, life. Now we get to revisit another problem that we've revisited twice already. Does this rim look familiar? Off the sprayer. The inner tube, again, split inside. So we're not gonna buy inner tubes from them anymore because that's the second one that has done it. Matter of fact, I think Eugene already took it to throw it away. Yeah, he did. Uh, Eugene helped me get that off and get the inner tube out last night uh, and get that done. So I got to order an inner tube See if the local, another local place has an inner tube to fit it. If not, I'll just order it online. But that's the second inner tube we've had from that last place we were at that split. No, no reason. There's no punctures in the tire, nothing, nothing on the rim to cause that to happen. It's the joys. The joys of farming. Batteries. Got new batteries for the tractor. There they are. The old ones were six years old, so they made it pretty good. Uh, but before I put this back in here, uh, Eugene last night while I was working on something else, had gotten all the dirt blown out of here and all cleaned up. I'm just gonna hit it with the wire wheel and hit some paint in here so that way we can keep this from rusting. I'm shaking this up. We've been doing some rearranging here to make room for different things in the shop. And we're making some progress. I got some more cleaning up to do up there. That's why things look a little disorganized. Plus we're starting to put things away from summertime. And well, the kids have been playing with the choo-choo train. I I've been playing with it too. All right, our paint job is is done. I'll let it dry for a little bit. It's still tacky, but uh, at least I can work around it now, and I'll probably throw the batteries in there in a minute. But I want to go ahead and clean up the, the terminal rings here a little bit, as these are made primarily of lead. Uh, they're very soft and prone to corrosion. So you can see some of the corrosion coming in there. So I've rigged this up. I've got a little brush on the end of my drill. We'll just stick it in the in the terminal end and clean it, see if it works. Never done this before. This, never done this before. I've cleaned terminals plenty of times, but you get it. Look at that, gorgeous. All right. And for the positive terminals, I need a little more help. Oh no, I scratched my paint job. Now I will warn you that uh, if somebody does do this, don't go too aggressive with it. That lead flakes off pretty easily. One, you don't want to breathe it in. Yeah, that whole lead poisoning thing leads to polio, yada yada, all that good stuff. And uh, you'll actually take out so much of the material inside that the, the terminal won't clamp around the post and give you a good connection. One more little thing to do before putting the batteries in and calling the project good. There it is. This is a product called Penatox. And what it is, what it's really used for is uh, keeping corrosion from developing around grounds. We primarily use it in our career field as radio technicians on the ground bus bars for the tower, inside the shelters. It aids in giving you a good ground conductivity and keeping corrosion. However, works great on batteries and keeping corrosion from happening there and giving you better conductivity. And it lasts forever. You don't have to like pour this stuff on. It really does last a long, long time. Okay, batteries are in place. I still gotta put the bracket on there to clamp them in. Based on some of the comments we've had in our videos, uh, some of you just aren't really mechanically inclined and you're learning, which is awesome. I applaud that. It seems that when it comes to electric, most people are terrified of it and they don't understand it. And it's good that you are scared of it if you don't understand it. 
But one thing I wanted to explain is anytime you're, you're putting a battery in your vehicle, tractor, car, truck, lawnmower, whatever, always hook up the terminals that are the hardest to get to first. It doesn't matter if you're doing the positive or negative. It does not matter because you are not completing the circuit until you hook up those sides. Now you might ask, well, why do you care if you hook up the positive first or the, the ground first? Why do you care that you hook the ones hardest to get to? The reason being is when I get in there with the, the ratchet, right now, if I were to short between the positive terminal and any one of these chassis pieces, normally you'd have an arc and you could burn up a screwdriver or your wrench or whatever you're using. However, because the ground is not hooked up, the batteries have no reference to chassis ground on the tractor. So I can take a screwdriver or a pair of pliers or anything and go right across the positive terminal to any part on the chassis, nothing's going to happen because there's no way for the electricity to flow back to the ground. Now, once I hook the ground up, you don't want to do that. But be, until you complete the circuit, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, so I always try to tell people, hook up the hardest thing to get to first because that minimizes your risk of damaging it, damaging the batteries or damaging anything around. Because if you do short out across, like let's say the chassis to the dosing module for the death, well, all of that current flow going through it could burn up components inside this module or any one of the modules on this tractor. Uh, so why take the risk? Then just, just do it that way. It's easier. Trust me on it. It's easier. I'm going to take our, our Pentatox and just lightly apply it on the inside. And this stuff is, is not toxic or anything. It, it's relatively harmless. It's more, more or less like a graphite, if you can see that. It does have, again, some, some properties of adding to conductivity as well as keeping corrosion at a minimum. Anytime you have an air gap in a circuit, that's resistance to the circuit, which means the circuit is less efficient. And when you hook up a battery, you're just hooking and completing a circuit. So let's make it as efficient as possible because two things. One, that increases the voltage and the current that goes to your starter and just about anything on the tractor runs electrical, which means it runs more efficiently. Less current draw across those devices means they last longer. But it also means that your batteries will last a little longer because they are being charged properly and they're getting a good steady flow of current from your alternator. After watching this, you're like, hey, I can change my own battery now. I'm gonna go do it. Something to keep in mind, these terminals here, okay, like I said, they're made of lead. Lead is a very malleable, soft metal and its tensile strength is extremely low. So you don't want to over tighten these around your post. This is how you loosen and tighten it. When you loosen it, it basically spreads this clamp open to get it over top of the post. Then you put it on, tighten it, and it clamps back down. The problem is if you clamp it too tight and it's being stretched around this post one, it makes it so that way eventually you're gonna to have to replace this, this whole line or put new ends on because this will get wore out. The other thing is it'll actually break it. Uh, it'll pull and try to pull so much around the post that it will crack It'll crack right here at the joint and break the post. I'm not gonna tell you how I know that, but just take it from my experience. That's something that can happen. Okay, we'll put some Pentatox on here. Just a little light. Run it around, make sure it's good coated all the way around. All right. Yeah, we'll get rid of the excess on my finger there. Whoop, see the sparks? We completed the circuit now. I'm going to have to loosen that up a little bit more. So now you don't want to cross those terminals back there with ground or else you will get a surprise that you won't enjoy. Okay. Whoop, 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 whoop. It's normal to have to do this because really all you're doing is spreading the clamp back out to get over the post. It's uh, I mean, if you're having to smack it with all you got, then there might be an issue, but all you're doing once you loosen these up is allowing the, as you bang it on the post, see the post isn't a perfect cylinder. 
as as you go down on the post, it's spread out like this, more like a trapezoid. So you know, as you beat it down onto the post, it's opening up, and that's that's what you're fighting is just the the uh, the clamp opening up. And this one doesn't seem to want to open very well. Let's back it off a little bit more, maybe. Looks like it was clear, but maybe not. All right, that's good. All's well with the world. Let's tighten it up. All right, everything's back together. Now, the real question, will it start? I would hope so with brand new batteries. That's a good sign. Oh yeah! All right, that's that was successful. So that's all ready for when we start shelling corn, we can put the discs back on, spread cover crop, and just lightly incorporate it with the discs, the uh, land mill, because corn is pretty much there. It's uh, ready. Maybe another week, possibly, maybe, who knows? Um, I am waiting to see what the moisture is. I gotta get a moisture tester and we'll knock some ears off and do that. That'll be in the next video, I think, because also in the next video, I've got to put our combine, set our combine up for corn. Uh, everything's still set up for doing wheat, so I've gotta do some changing of the rotor settings, change those veins back to fast in the, uh, the back of the rotor. Do a couple other odds and end things to it, nothing too major, because everything else was done before wheat harvest, so the combine is pretty much ready to go other than making some adjustments. And I'll go get the corn head, put it on, and we'll be ready to get rolling. So hopefully in the next video, we might even shell just a little bit of corn. Get it ready. I'm excited. It's here, finally. Start seeing uh, some of our hard work get turned into actual green stuff, cash. So with that, thank you all for watching. Uh, don't forget, we are, are still doing our Race to 1,000 subscriber giveaway where once we hit 1,000 subscribers, we're selecting one lucky person to receive a prize valued at $1,000, which is free gun training by PTP Gun to get your Maryland handgun qualification license as well as trained for getting your concealed carry permit. Uh, also in the giveaway, we are going to do a barbecue right here on the farm hosted by yours truly and, um, you know, kick back, have some fun, drink some beer with Ryan Gass of PTP Gun, and myself, and just kind of enjoy the day. So, subscribe. Appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye from Delmarva. Shorebelly Farmer, out. If I could find it, I know I have it. Okay, we're going to play that game where I open every single thing.